Hello, welcome to my YouTube channel, Science Snake, where we analyze science concepts and learn quick ways to solve science problems. Today we're looking at stoichiometry in chemistry. Before we begin, make sure to write down the molar qualities to use. We will be using these throughout the video. In this problem, we are given an equation 2Fe2S3 plus 3 carbon gives you 4Fe plus 3CS2. Number 1. How many moles of carbon are needed to react with 12.6 moles of Fe2S3? There are four steps to solving this problem. Step one is identify the variables. We need to go back to the problem in order to identify each of those variables. So what we're gonna do is write down what's given. What's given is 12.6 moles of Fe2S3. Next thing we're looking for is what we're solving for. And that is how many moles of carbon are needed to react with 12.6 moles of Fe2S3. We are looking for moles. How many moles of Fc are needed to react with 12.6 moles of Fe2S3? What is the second step? The second step is balance the equation. The equation we are given is 2Fe2S3 plus 3C gives you 4Fe plus 3CS2. We need to check if the equation is balanced before we start or we can end up with the wrong answer. What you want to do is start by drawing a line underneath that arrow to separate your reactants from your products. If you want a video on balancing equations, make sure to give this video a thumbs up and leave a comment below. Next, we write down elements on both sides and total up the amount for each element. Lastly, you total it up by multiplying the coefficient, the leading number, by the subscript, which is the bottom number of a variable. On my reactant side, I have iron equals 2 times 2 equals 4, followed by sulfur, 2 times 3 equals 6, and carbon equals 3. On my product side, or the right side, I have iron equal to 4, sulfur equal to 6, and carbon equal to 3. Go ahead and pause this video to go over what I just explained. Is this equation balanced on both sides? The answer is yes. Both sides have the same amount for each element. Step 3. Set up molar ratios. Start with what's given. 12.6 moles of Fe2S3 over 1. We normally don't put a 1 there, but for the purpose of this video, I will place it. Times 3 moles of carbon divided by 2 moles of Fe2S3. Always remember to cross-cancel the same units. We have moles of Fe2S3 at the top, so we can cross-cancel it with the bottom units, moles of Fe2S3. If you are on track with getting the answer, you should always end up with the units you are looking for, which in this case, we are looking for moles of carbon. Our final step is step four, chug. Grab a calculator and punch in the numbers. The answer is 18.9 moles of carbon. So now it's your turn. Go ahead and pause the video and solve for number two. Don't forget the four steps we learned. Identify the variables, balance the equation, set up molar ratios, and lastly, chug. Welcome back. The answer is 18.9 moles CS2. Don't forget to always write down your units. If you didn't get this answer correct, that's okay. It just means you need more practice. So let's go ahead and do number three. What volume of CaOH is produced when 78 grams of CaI2 reacts with excess LiOH? We are going to apply the four steps we previously learned. So in this problem, we are looking for volume of calcium hydroxide. That is going to be what we are looking for. So step one, identify the variables. When we identify the variables, we start with what's given. So what's given is 78 grams of CaI2. What we are solving for is volume of CaOH2. Step two, we're going to balance the equation. They gave us an equation at the beginning of the problem. 
So we're going to go ahead and start by drawing a line underneath the arrow. That way we can split up our reactants from our products. If we take a look at the left side, we have our reactants. We start by listing all of the elements. Calcium equals 1, iodine equals 2, lithium equals 1, oxygen equals 1, and hydrogen equals 1. On the right side, we have our products. So we're going to go ahead and list the elements again. We have one calcium, one iodine, one lithium, two oxygen, and two hydrogens. Is this equation balanced? The answer is no. We don't have the same amount of iodines, oxygens, and hydrogens on both sides. What I did was I added a coefficient of 2 in front of lithium hydroxide, and I got 2 lithium, 2 oxygen, and 2 hydrogen. How did I get that? You multiply the coefficient by the subscript. Because there is no subscript, I just have two of those items. On the right side, I have my products, and I added a coefficient of 2 in front of lithium iodide. That way, I can get 2 lithium and 2 iodide, making this equation balanced. Now that we balance our equation, we can move on to step 3. In step 3, we set up our molar ratios. We will be using mole equalities to use that I previously mentioned at the beginning of this video. We always start with what's given, 78 grams of calcium iodide divided by 1 times 1 mole of calcium iodide divided by 293.88 grams of calcium iodide. Where did I get that mass? You use your periodic table. Calcium equals 40.08 grams. Iodine, we have two of them, so we have to do 2 times 126.90 grams equals 253.8, and the total mass is 293.88 grams. Remember, we are solving for volume, so the units we want is liters. This is where you use the value given at the beginning of the video. The molar volume of a gas at STP is 22.4 liters per mole. You can now cross cancel same units and you should end up with liters because we are solving for volume. Step four, you chug. Grab your calculator and punch in the numbers. V equals 5.95 liters of calcium hydroxide. That's it for this video. If you enjoyed it, don't forget to subscribe and give it a thumbs up. Thanks for watching.